Let's take this case study to understand how to prepare consolidated profit and loss account. Given below the profit and loss account of H Limiter and its subsidiary, say S Limiter, for the year ended 31st March 2017, we have sales and other income of both the companies, then increase in inventories, then we have various expenses, raw material consumed, wages, production, admin, selling and distribution, interest, depreciation. So all the expenses total. Then we have profit before tax, we have provision for tax, profit after tax, then dividend paid, balance of profit. Some other information, H Limited sold goods to S Limited of uh, 120 lakhs at cost plus 20%. Inventory of S Limited includes goods valuing 24 lakhs. Admin expenses of S Limited include 5 lakhs paid to H Limited as uh, consultancy fees. Selling and distribution expenses of H Limited include 10 lakh paid to S Limited as commission. H Limited holds 80% of share capital of uh, 1000 lakhs in S Limited before 2015-16. H Limited took credit to its profit and loss account the appropriate amount of uh, dividend declared and paid by S Limited for the year 2015-16. Okay. So, based on these information, we have to prepare consolidated profit and loss account. Preparing consolidated profit and loss account is uh, relatively straightforward when compared with the consolidated balance sheet because there you have to carry out various adjustments. Here mostly we will be doing line by line addition, barring few items requiring some adjustments. For example, if there are any intercompany transactions involved, those transactions have to be excluded. If there is a sale between H and S, purchase between H and S, they got to be excluded in the sales and purchases. If there are any inventories lying unsold, then the profits that were loaded on those inventories got to be excluded. So whatever the intercompany transaction that are going to happen, those got to be excluded. And then the net amount only we have to take to the consolidated PNL. So I'll show you the format of consolidated PNL. So this is the format. Here we have consolidated profit and loss account of H Limited and its subsidiary S Limited for the year ended 31st March 2017. The first item, revenue from operations. Okay, so here we are going to show the overall revenue generated from operations and that total would appear here. Then various expenses, cost of material consumed, purchased, then changes in inventories of finished goods, then employee benefit expense, finance cost, depreciation, other expenses, all combined together should come over. Then the revenue minus expenses will give profit before tax, will deduct overall tax, we get profit after tax. And this is the profit which will be used as a base for determining what profit should be transferred to consolidated balance sheet. That is, we take profit after tax as a base, we'll be deducting the dividends paid. And if there are any cross dividend, I mean, holding to subsidiary, subsidiary holding, then that got to be deducted, then eventually we'll get the profit to be transferred to consolidated balance sheet. Okay, so let's get started. We'll go item by item. First, we need the information about revenue from operations. If you go back to the question, here you have, there are sales and other income. Okay, but I think there is some more additional information. H Limited sold goods to S Limited 120 lakhs at cost plus 20%. Now, Inventory of uh, S Limited. Okay, this is an adjustment related to inventory, but this is the first item. Here there is a sales by H to S, and it's a intercompany sales which we have to knock off at the time of consolidation. Okay, so keeping this as a base, let's get into working note. I'm going to call it as notes to accounts. Basically, that should form part of the consolidated PL and balance sheet, but here I have structured it in a way it is going to help us to find out what amount should go to consolidated PL. Okay, so let me just uh, make it ready. Yeah, the first item we are going to talk about uh, revenue from operations. I'll catch it here. Item number one revenue from operations, and based on our understanding, the revenue from H Limited is 5000, S Limited is 1000. So I'll put it here H Limited 5000, S Limited it's 1000. But in between there is an adjustment. There is a sale by H Limited to S Limited that got to be removed. So this 120 have to be removed. And if we do this, yes, 
we can get the net amount but there are some more items should also be adjusted what are they if you read the question it's not only the sales some other revenue if you read here expenses of s limited include five lakhs paid to h limited as consultancy fee so this s limited has paid five lakhs to h limited it means h limited has some other income of five lakhs which is received from s limited and selling distribution expense of h limited include 10 lakh paid to s limited it means in first case h limited has an income in second case s limited has an income which is 5 lakhs and 10 lakhs they got to be deducted from this revenue calculation so it is not only this 120 okay we should also deduct the 5 lakhs we should also deduct 10 lakhs so this 135 lakhs got to be deducted and if we now arrive at it is 5000 plus 1000 minus 135 we get the revenue from operation as 5865 so only this should go to consolidated PNL. So in consolidated PNL, we'll say note number one, and the amount is this 5865. So that has been done. The second item, we should focus on the expenses. What is the cost of material purchased and consumed? Let us have our working note or notes. I'll put it here note number two it is cost of material purchased or consumed now what is the material purchased by h limited let's see material purchased by h limited is 800 and that of s limited is 200 but this 200 includes 120 that was sold by h limited okay so we have to keep that in mind so this is basically 800 and 200 from this 200 we have to remove this 120 so now if I sum all this I get 880 which is nothing but cost of material purchased or consumed so here I can say note number 2 and the amount is this 880 okay next is change of uh, inventories of finished goods where we have to capture what happened to the inventory now let's see if you see the inventory is actually increasing in H limited increases 1000 S limited increases 200 so whenever there is an increase it should uh, go to the credit side if you are preparing in a traditional format and if you are preparing in a vertical format uh, what will you do you will show it as expense but with a deduction okay we will show it as an expense with a deduction so let's capture that I'm going to call it as note number three there is increase in inventories of finished goods now what is the inventory with the uh, H limited it's thousand and with uh, S limited is it 200 let's cross check yeah it's 200 1200 so here we cannot directly go and say it's 1200 because there is some information on the inventory maintained by s limited if you read this inventory of s limited includes goods valuing 24 lakhs that is inventory of s limited includes such goods which goods the goods that were sent by h limited H limited sold goods to S limited of 120 lakhs at cost plus 20 percent so this 120 lakhs is cost plus 20 percent so of that 24 lakh worth of goods are still pending it means from this we have to knock off the profit that is loaded so how we are going to do that here I'm going to say this 24 lakhs which is pending let me show that with a minus sign because we have to deduct this 24 lakh is representing 120 that is cost plus profit of 20 I want to remove the profit alone which is 20 and if I do that I get minus 4 so now if I deduct this that is 1000 plus 200 minus 4 I get 1196 and this is increase in inventory 
So increase in inventory will improve the profit. It means it is actually reducing the cost. So here I have to show changes of inventories of finished goods as a deduction item. So let me pick up from here. It is this 1196, but I have to show this with a minus sign. Done? Yeah. Next, we have employee benefit expense. What are the information we have regarding employee benefit? Let's go and see. We have wages and salaries. That's it. I think uh, we don't have any specific adjustment. So we'll say working note four, wages and salaries and the amount involved are, it's this 800 and 150. So it is 800, this is 150, no adjustment. So if I simply apply the formula, I get 950. And here I can place them also. It's working note four and the value involved is 950. Then we have finance cost. Let's see. Finance cost, if you read, uh, you have here interest 100 plus 50. That's it. So let's have it as uh, note number five. Finance cost, which is 150. No adjustment involved. So we can simply copy this and here I can place it note number five, which is 150. Then next item is depreciation and amortization. Do we have depreciation? Yes, it is 100 plus 50. So we can have it as note number six, depreciation, which is again 150, no adjustment. So I'm just copying the formula. We get 150. Let me paste it over here. Note number six and it is 150. Then other expenses. Now in case of uh, other expenses, we have to pay attention because some admin expenses, some consultancy charges are involved. So let's see what are the other expenses we have. Selling, then administrative, then there are also production expenses. All these have to be kept in mind. Now when we notice we have production expenses uh, which can be uh, classified separately as manufacturing or production expenses but this format is not giving that flexibility. So what we'll do, we'll bring in the production expenses also under cost of material purchased or consumed. So what we'll do, we'll go to this working note where already we have captured cost of material for H limited and S limited. Along with that, let us also add production expenses. For H limited production is 200, for S it is 100. Let's add that also. So this is basically 800 plus 200 and this is going to be 200 plus 100. So this is including production expense. It means now the material cost is 1180. So now it's time to focus on the other expenses what we discussed. So here we'll say item number seven, other expenses. Under that we have say two or three items. What are the items we are going to discuss? One is admin, two is selling and distribution. Production has been clubbed with the material. So we have only two. So let me write item one is administrative expenses. Item number two is selling and distribution expenses. Now, what are the selling and distribution expenses we have and admin expenses? We should bring them here. Okay. If you go through, it's basically 200, 100 and 250. Let me capture 200, 100 and 250. Now, some adjustment is required because uh, we have seen there is a 5 lakhs of consultancy, there's a 10 lakhs of commission, they got to be deducted. So here we'll deduct uh, 5 lakhs of consultancy admin expenses, okay, and uh, commission 10 lakhs. Now we have already taken the corresponding effect on the income side. If you notice this 15, already we have taken or given effect over here, right? This uh, 5 and 10, that's nothing but this. 15. So what is the net position? That is if I total all this, I get uh, 295 
as far as uh, admin expense is concerned and selling and distribution it is 240 so if I total this let me total this I get 535 and this becomes the relevant figure so I can directly take this figure 535 let me put it here it's going to be note number 7 and the value is this 535 so we have captured uh, most of the items let us total the revenue and cost total revenue no big difference it's same 5865 as far as the total cost is concerned we have to total all this and we get 1769 so what is going to be the profit before tax it's 5865 minus 1769 so we get 4096 on this what is the tax expense for that we need a small note note number 8 tax expense what is for H limited and what is for say S limited it's 1200 and 200 I'll we'll put it 1200 200 no adjustment so we get the uh, sum of these two which is 1400 so here we can bring them it's uh, 1400 so that is done so what is the profit after tax profit after tax is 2696 okay so now our task is finding what is the profit that should be transferred to consolidated balance sheet so we'll again start with this we have profit before tax of 2696 we have to do some adjustments to do that or to find that so 2696 from this dividend got to be paid now what is the dividend amount if you read the question the dividend that is uh, say declared by H limited for the period ending 31st March 2017 is 1200 I'm going to capture that here itself it's 1200 and uh, the dividend that has been declared by say S limited is 150 so this is the total position let me just total this now of the 150 80 percentage share is held by H limited so this is paid by S limited and received by H limited in the consolidation process that should get knocked off so from this 150 let us deduct 80 percent that is 120 it means only the balance should be considered as overall dividend outgo so if I sum all the three where minus is given due effect I get 1220 and this is going to be a deduction so I'll show with a minus sign 1230 okay so we had profit after tax so much from which we are deducting 1230 it means the profit that will be transferred to consolidated balance sheet is 1466 this is the profit which is going to be transferred to consolidated balance sheet now here question if you look at the question question says H limited to credit to its profit and loss account the proportionate amount of dividend declared and paid by S limited for the year 2015-16 we don't have that information what is the dividend declared in 2015-16 we don't have any idea so we are not touching on that uh, part but here S limited declared 150 of which 120 is attributable to H limited so that has been directed of course H limited will be accounting its receipt in the next year at the time it will be removed from the income part also okay so this is the consolidated profit and loss account 